All societies have imposed social classifications on their members. We have invented numerous ways to classify people, originally by wealth, power, or prestige. Today we also classify by ability, education, and even where people live and what they eat. Because the social class to which one belongs directly relates to income level, the types of food a person consumes are often a direct indicator of one's rank in society. Artists have used representations of food in their work as subtle and not so subtle messages about society and its ever-present hierarchies. Painted in the mid-19th century, The Angelus by Jean-Francois Millet shows a couple praying over their crops. These peasant farmers rely on this harvest for their nourishment and financial well-being. Even though they are standing in a vast expanse, you get the feeling that they are not the wealthy owners of the land surrounding them. In this painting, Malay brings up the notion that often the farmers of the land do not own the land, a no an idea we still struggle with in today's society. We are given a glimpse of what life was like for African Americans during the post-Civil War era in banjo lesson by Henry Asawa Tanner. Although they were no longer slaves, African Americans still maintained a low social status in society. Take a moment to look at the table behind the scene. It is humbly set with a pitcher of water and bread. In this house, there is no need for fancy table settings or elaborate meals, nor is there money for to spend on such things. Yet the people in the scene seem content about where they are. In Capro's Modern Happenings Work Household, the participants lick the jam off a beetle, which is a car that was in the hippie movement where everybody came to enjoy one thing, to have a good time, and the jam is a household daily product where not only just one class can enjoy, but all classes can enjoy. So there was no barrier, and Capro wanted everyone to come together in this messy yet bittersweet moment of art. Andre Matisse illustrates the scene of a maid setting the table in his work, Dinner Table. Unlike the table in Banjo Lesson, this elaborate feast will most likely be consumed by a wealthy family. Matisse allows us into this world of privilege occupied by many of his patrons. This scene gives us insight about the disparities in today's society among the wealthy and poor and what they can afford to eat. The Potato Eaters by Vincent van Gogh is a painting of poor country people in the Netherlands. Although farmers grow thousands of pounds of food, they are depicted as not having enough. When I see people eating a diet of purely potatoes, I do think poverty. I see the vulnerability and misery in the characters shown in their malnourished bodies in dim setting. Van Gogh said himself, It would be wrong, I think, to give a peasant picture a conventional smoothness. If a peasant picture smells of bacon, smoke, and potato steam, that's not uncommon. The liberation of Aunt Jemima is a mixed-media sculpture done by racially charged feminist artist Betty Saar. Food like Aunt Jemima's mixes and syrups is an example of big business exploiting black products. Aunt and uncle were used to describe house slaves who turned their native African foods into regular dishes for their owners. Aunt Jemima's was made in the 1800s, and it may be interesting to look at the difference in Aunt Jemima's ingredients now and back then. The more European look of Aunt Jemima now is shown in the work. Wayne Thiebaud's pie counter provides insight to the social class of American society. This image of pies and cakes lined up in a display of mass production represents the garish excess of food and consumerism in America. Globally, 40,000 people die every day from starvation. They simply don't have enough food to survive. As depicted by Thiebaud's painting, Americans have such an excess of food, we not only mass produce it, but we mass produce types of food that aren't even necessary for the very survival that much of the globe struggles to achieve. It's difficult to imagine anybody not born in a society of excess having any desire to paint that which they've never been privileged enough to experience. 
Few artworks in the world represent high society's affinity for the excess indulgence of food better than the Oldenburg and Van Bruggen sculpture, Spoonbridge and Cherry. Just shy of 60 feet wide and 30 feet tall, this monument to delectability serves no real practical function beyond aesthetics. The Spoon Bridge is a bridge that doesn't fully span the pool in which it rests, therefore rendering it useless as a bridge, and the giant cherry acts as a fountain, not a source of nourishment. As mentioned in regard to pie counter, these types of foods are typically used for excess consumption as opposed to survival. Where wheat and rice might be looked upon as an elixir of life for poorer societies, sweet foods like cherries and pies represent wealth and privilege among richer societies. In Ida Applebrook's Noble Fields, she displays a young child eating watermelon. Watermelon can be easily associated with poverty or people of low social class. Watermelon is inexpensive and easy to harvest which makes it accessible to low-income families. Although Applebrook tends to have many concealed symbols in her paintings, I believe that one may find that this choice of food could be directly connected to low social class. In Emily Dressier, where we come from, one can easily obtain a symbolic reference to social class with the choice of food Dressier chooses to use in her artwork. This piece of art tells a story with pictures of a family picking fruit on a farm in, Palest in Palestine. Jasir's Palestinian background plays a prominent factor in her artwork. The role of food can be perceived differently among countries. In America, fruit pickers are considered very low status, but in Palestine, the social status is somewhat different for this profession. The value of food is more significant in war-torn countries. Although a fruit picker is still not classified as high social class in Palestine, the status is still different than a fruit picker from America. This again is another example that supports the idea that food can be an indicator of social class. No matter if the artist chose to represent images of food directly, packaging related to food, and or representations of people with their implied relationships between them and their food, the correlation between what people eat, or rather have the means to eat, says an awful lot about who we are and how our culture defines itself.